Dreams 2021 holiday collection. And I will be demoing and reviewing the House of Dreams Dior Quint and trying on all four of the Diorific lipsticks. So if you're interested, keep watching. Hi, beauty fam. I'm really excited today because I finally got my entire Dior holiday 2021 order in. It took a while. I think they were back ordered or out of stock and all of my Dior products have come in. So since there's so many eyeshadow palettes um, and a total of three that I picked up, I will be doing one and um, each and then I might try to either do a separate one for the um, Dior Ecrin Couture which is a beautiful uh, five pan palette. But today I want to try on the House of Dreams palette, which is 739 House of Dreams. And it's the one with the silver in the middle and this um, more um, light pink, purpley mauve tones in the color story. Oh, this was the palette I was most drawn to. And I think because of mostly because of the cool tones and the shimmer. And I ended up picking up the other one just because I, even though I have a lot of warm tones, you know, this is a special edition. None of the Dior quints have ever steered me wrong. So I wanted kind of a staple warm tone palette from Dior with the gold. And I, I mean, any of these Dior quints with the reformulation are a good deal to get. So some of you have seen reviews already. And if you're not aware, this the entire collection is based off of where Dior is headquartered. The embossing that is on the quince and then on the lipsticks, the Diorific lipsticks, are all the facade of the building in which Dior is located in Paris, France. So I'm, like other people, I'm really not wanting to mess up this embossing, but I'm also not the one to just buy makeup and collect it. And I know some people do that. That's not me. I definitely love to use my makeup. So um, just enjoying the embossing for what it is now. And <laughs> I'll have the pictures for posterity. Okay, and that's what it looks like. And that silver one really pops. And so today, I'm as always, I'm trying to film in natural lighting, but I added some studio lighting because it is a little bit overcast, just so you know. Okay, so here are the swatches. And from deepest to lightest, definitely this is the star of the show, but these end up being really, looks almost on my skin tone, uh, like a, it looks like a purpley pink mauve tone. So definitely a cool tone and I love it. So this is definitely the lightest in the palette. So I'll probably use that for inner corner highlight or brow, but, um, those are the colors. I already have my foundation concealer and eye prep done. I'm wearing La Mer foundation today. I just have a lip oil just to hydrate my lips. And I have uh, eye primer, I have my concealer down here and my eyes are prepped and primed already. And I'm taking my crease, classic crease Sonia G from the Sky Set. Okay, I'm taking my Wayne Goss 17 brush and going into this shade just to deepen up my crease because this is a very light color, but it's very pretty. It could be a kind of a wash um, daytime one and done. In the Wayne Goss 03 just to buff and blend these out. And then I'm wondering if what will happen if I take this brush. We'll see. I'm going to take the um, Chikahoto eyeshadow brush and go into the silver shade and see how it works. Very pretty. I think it almost packed it on too much. 
um, I would suggest a smaller brush if you have small eyes. So I'm going back into that Wayne Goss 17 and just in that deeper shade, just to temper a little bit that silver shade. And then taking the rougher 03 brush and then I'm going into this light peachy shade and just putting it in the brow bone. It has almost a pink shift. That's pretty. It was this shade is much prettier than I thought it'd be. It's at least on my skin tone, it's a really beautiful contrast with my tan skin. It almost like a peachy pink, if you can see that. Taking this Suku brush that I got in um, recently, I will probably take this shade here. And then I'm taking my tried and true Sonia G Mini Booster. I love this for my crease and the outer V. And I'm just dabbing into that deep shade. And then I'm taking a Wayne Goss 05 brush and taking that same shade, the deepest chocolate shade. And I'm going to lightly dab it underneath. And then I ran it up here too, just to deepen the lash here. Going back into that same Suko brush just to blend. Very pretty. It's a very cool tone palette. And I'm going to see what happens if I take this with my finger and just drag it on. Yeah, you definitely get more of an impact. And so let me buff that out a little bit. So it's a go easy on the silver because it can migrate and take over all the other colors. Really beautiful, cool tone palette. Okay, I turned off the studio light because I wasn't sure if it was washing out the actual color of the palette. So if you can see, this is definitely more of a peachy pink in the middle, or this is a peachy pink on the inner corner. It almost looks like a purple mauve up here. And then the showstopper shade is this silver one here. Really pretty. I'm going to finish the other eye and then I'll be back. Okay, I finished up with the eye look with mascara and tight lining my eyes with some Slate by Chantecaille. And I was given a Dior mascara sample, so I used the Dior Show Iconic Over Curl on my lashes. So, so why don't I get in closer so you can see the final look for my eyes. And I'm really happy with this eyeshadow. I think it's even more beautiful than I thought it would be. The moment I thought, oh, I don't need this eyeshadow palette because it reminded me a little bit of Natasha Denona Glam. And I would say it's similar in color story, but there's only five colors. So for me, it's a little bit easier to navigate just the five colors are already already selected for me to, to put on my eyes. I really love this pink shimmery color in front is a nice contrast with the silver. So I'm really happy with this, this eyeshadow palette. It's beautiful. So why don't I finish up with my look and then we'll do some comparisons. I recently, and this is not part of the Atelier of Dreams collection, I picked up recently the Dior Blush 459 Charnel, and I'll show you what that is. And it's, I got it because it's more of like a nudie pink color, cool color, and it's really beautiful. And so I wanted to use that today. Let me swatch that for you, what that looks like. So we'll see if it shows up. Yeah, it's going to be a buildable kind of blush. That's really pretty. I'm taking my Sony G Soft Cheek.
Oh, it's really pretty. Definitely put too much. So for the sake of, um, let's see if I can tone it down a little bit. It's a really beautiful blush. It's kind of like this muted pink. I have to say, Dior is really just this year with their products yours just so to turn it around in the past two years I with the blushes and the quince in particular and now this holiday collection and I just toned down my blush but I'm adding more um just, I just want you to be able to see it for the sake of the video and there is a little bit of a sheen to it can you see but I would say it doesn't show my texture so you know you know who <laughs> so I bought this blush on recommendation of Michelle Wong maybe buy it so she was right this is a beautiful beautiful blush I could see pulling this as a um, kind of like an everyday if you don't know what to pull for a, a blush this would be like the one to grab or even one to travel with because I could see depending on what you're wearing it could go either way like warm or cool um, because I have a warm undertone it you know I think some peachy parts of it pull a little bit warmer. It's beautiful, but it was really nice with this. So we're done with, I haven't put any bronzer on. I want to try my new Sony G Face Pro brush with this Tom Ford Goldust. And so this is probably one of my favorite bronzers. I have a lot of bronzers, but why don't I go in and see how this is? Cause I'm still looking for the perfect bronzer brush. So there is, it picks up, let's see. Wow, this brush is fabulous. I hope those of you who did want to get this brush were able to get it because a lot of us were waiting for quite a while. So it's beautiful. This is, oh, I just don't even know what to say other than I just, if you wanted it and I hope you got it because it's, it laid that bronzer down really beautifully. Okay, so we'll try some lipstick now since I picked up all of the colors from the collection. Some swatches of them now to see which one I'll end up putting on today. Start with the lightest one for the for the Diorific 074 Rose de Via Satin. So this is my first time trying this formula. Um, in the past I've gotten Dior lipsticks and they've often, in my experience, they've often turned or just they had really small, they had a really strong fragrance and I'm not really big on fragrance with lipstick but I don't know if companies are now cluing in to lower the fragrance, but you know, I thought I'd give it a try. It definitely has like a lipsticky smell. I don't know if it's added perfume, but this is the color of the Diva, which is probably the most neutral color of this collection. I was really wanting to try this formula because it's the Diorific, which is part of the holiday, and to see if the quality was any different. Wow, that's a beautiful like everyday kind of nudie pink that would look really nice with this look I can see that probably being one of the most popular colors because it's a little bit more neutral and the rest are very bold with uh, reds red oranges and a deep uh, purple berry so this one is 075 rouge capuchin also a satin lipstick really beautiful Oh, that's so pretty. It's like a orangey, orangey red. That may be better for the other palette. And next we have 076 
Top Ispahan. It's more of a brick red is what I'm gonna guess. I'm sad because I'm messing up the the seed, the Christian Dior embossing on there, but you know, look, we gotta use these. Yeah. It's like a brown red. Not much more brick red, it's like a brown, more brown. That's beautiful too. So it's a little bit warmer. Uh, Diorific 077 Midnight Carole. So this deep berry color. So pretty. And it, right off the bat, it reminds me of Lisa Eldridge's Velvet Midnight, but not as deep. So if you put Velvet Midnight really a much lighter, it reminds me. But these are satin lipsticks, not mattes. So they're going to go on much more creamy. Rose d'hiver. I think this is a beautiful color. I'm so glad I got it. I thought it would be too light for my skin tone, this, but it matches this blush really well up here. If that makes sense, let me do a swatch of that. Sorry, that's a terrible swatch, but it really complements this blush color. Um, I would say it's very satin and I could probably get away without wearing a lip liner. It looks really pretty. And I think with my aging lips, cause I'm getting, it's just not as plump anymore. It doesn't accentuate the lines on my lips. So I really appreciate that. That looks really beautiful. And it's a lot different than what I've tried with Dior lipsticks before. Maybe it's the Diorific formula and let me know below if you know if the let me know below if you know if the diorific um formula ends up being a little bit special regard like in relation to the regular dior lipsticks i'm really happy with this one i think it matches really beautifully with this eye look fills in the ridges a little more makes my lips a little bit more plump which is nice yeah definitely a beautiful satin formula um, and the perfume, it's dissipating. It's just, it went on. I could smell it right when I opened it, but I don't smell it anymore if perfume is um, bothersome to you. So I'm really sad to take it off, but we'll see. We're going to try it the next color. Okay, this is Taupe Ispahan. Oh, that's a beautiful color too. It's like not too brown. It's like the beautiful balance of red and brown. That's such a beautiful color. I'm so glad I picked these up. I'll try the other two. I just want to try the other two now just because I had a suspicion that these Diorific lipsticks were going to be special and that's why I picked these up. This definitely elevates the look to be a little bit more glamorous too. Okay, so we'll try the next two. Okay, and I, so just so you know, I, you know, I took off the lipstick and it was relatively easy to take them off. It wasn't like, you know, sometimes when I take off lipstick, you can see a lot of the previous colors and undertones under there still left over. It was easy to take off. So we're going into the, the Rouge Capuchin 075 next. And this is, you know, definitely warmer and then it's an orange, but we'll try it because I just want to try all the lipsticks now. Wow, <laughs> this is this is a beautiful color. It reminds me of Dragon, um, and I'll and I'll pull that out so we can compare. But it's brighter, and you know it's maybe less orange. I'm not sure. Maybe more orange. I can't tell. This is a beautiful color. I'm gonna back up because I just want to see for contrast back here. Now that's a beautiful color. I think I might use a liner with this one just because the brighter we go, it's less forgiving if it goes outside the lines through time. Right off the bat, I'm thinking about Lisa Eldridge Dragon. 
So I'm, gra I'm grabbing the lip liner. That would go really well. Okay, so I grabbed Lisa Eldridge's uh, Velvet Dragon just as a comparison. So let me find it. Oh, here we go. Okay, so this is Diorific 075 Rouge Capuchine, and this is Velvet Dragon for, by Lisa Eldridge. Obviously, two different formulas. This is matte, and this is a satin, and actually you can see some of the the sheen in here already. It's going to be a little bit more forgiving and more slip, whereas the, the matte, you know, you just got to make sure your lips are hydrated. Um, it's very similar, but let me let me swatch uh, Dragon next to Capuchine, just so you can see. Definitely richer. And there's almost like a pink purple shift in the Dior one, if you can see, because it's a satin. I mean, certainly if you have Dragon already, you don't need to get Capuchine and that you could probably shear it out. But there's something different about this formula that when I was putting it on, I don't know how else to describe it. Like when I was putting it on, I just felt like just the level of sophistication with Dior products and lipsticks. Like I felt like I was really wearing an elegant, but as I was putting on, I was just really feeling that I was wearing a very elegant lipstick, a grown sophisticated woman's lipstick. Not that I wouldn't say this is, but there's something about this formula because I think it's so creamy and there's almost like a sheen, a glowy sheen that I just felt really just really grown and sophisticated. I don't know how else to describe it, but really beautiful. Definitely would wear a liner with that because I think through time it would go outside the lines. Okay, we're gonna go try the last one. Okay, that one left a little stain. You can see some of that orange left over. The last one is Midnight Corolle 077. Midnight Curl. This is beautiful. I could wear this too if I wanted to amp up the evening look on this. Uh, this I really love this color, especially in the fall winter. This reminds me of a color I used to wear when my younger days. It was a Revlon deep berry color. Um, and if you grew up in the 90s as a young person wearing makeup, you know what I'm talking about. But this kind of Berry was very popular at that time of like having a pale look, um, kind of dark, grungy eye makeup, and then a deep, deep berry. So I'm really loving this like throwback. Um, again, it's like that's it's really one application. Um, I would definitely use a liner with this. I'm pulling my Lisa Eldridge Midnight Liner just so you could see. Definitely would wear that. Let me actually line it now. Let me see. I'm probably going to not finish with this color though. Yes, definitely you, you can use the Midnight Liner. And I would say that if you have Lisa Eldridge Midnight already, you don't have to get this. It's pretty much, um, let me swatch it for you here. It's a little bit deeper, but you could get the same kind of look if you shear it out. And when, if I'll link at that video up above where I ended up shearing this color because if I put it on matte, to all the way it was like, too deep for me and so I ended up laying down some lip oil and then putting this out just to shear it out into more like a satin gloss but a beautiful color when I um, made this more of a gloss but it's kind of the same vibe I would say if you want something where you don't have to do that you can just you know put it on without having to make a gloss um, this is a very easy color the Dior show some swatches. So I don't think these are dupable within the Dior line, but out of the ones that I have, I could probably, I pulled out Soft Cashmere and Mitza. And I think Mitza is too warm, but I'll show them for comparison. And if anything, maybe these two shades, but I'll go ahead and swatch them. So I was thinking this one, at the bottom and this this brown one would be similar and I'll put that here. So the brown's a little bit deeper in the Mitza and I think this other one, it's also too warm. So these are definitely lighter colors on the pinky uh, purple mauve spectrum. So no for Mitza. 
And then the other one that I'm thinking is a soft cashmere. Um, I was also thinking tutu, but I don't own that. And that's definitely more of a purple quint. Off the bat, let's see. I'm just going to probably just go ahead and swatch all of these. These five below are soft cashmere and it's definitely a more cool tone brown vibe though the bottom swatches are soft cashmere and the top is house of dreams i would say they have a similar vibe but they're not the same um, if anything maybe these two are similar these silvery shades the bottom's more of a topper but um if anything let me see this one this one in soft cashmere is similar to this up here, probably here, but it's not exactly the same. But it's not exactly the same. I would say they're like a little bit smokier and deeper. I love this palette though. I could see this being like, this is like an everyday cool tone palette. This is my favorite one of cool tones, but this one is giving it run for its money, <laughs> I would say. Um, but yeah, that is so, I, I don't have two two, but that might be similar. But uh, some reviews I think I've seen it's not exactly the same. So I'm going to add the other quint to this review plus this. That's making for a pretty long video. Okay, in terms of this House of Dreams quint, I think if you're a cool tone lover and you're really wanting something of Dior for the holiday season, I would say this would be to get this. I think, um, I think this is like a almost like a nine out of ten for me, just because it was the ease of use of these Dior palettes. This is what I love about these quints that they're fast becoming my favorite of the smaller shadows um, versus like the big pans like Pat McGrath or Natasha Denona and that they're so curated and beautifully curated that you can get any quint from the Dior line of a color story that speaks to you and it's you're going to have a, like a great experience with this product and I think so if you're wanting to get this and if, if you're wanting to get something from Dior from the holiday season and you're wanting cool versus warm, I would say for sure pick this up. I don't know if this is limited edition. It might be. I think last time I checked, I got this from the Dior website straight from Dior itself. But I it's popping up on, I believe, Macy's. And I think a lot, Macy's has a lot of, of sales. You might want to check Macy's out and you might want to check out Nordstrom, which will price match other retailers if there is a sale and i'm not sure if this is showing up in sephora i have last time i checked it's not up on the sephora website in time for the sale but you never know for the rouge event but yeah i, I was this is the quint i was wanting and i'm not <laughs> not disappointed this is beautiful and so i'll come in so you can see for the final look i'm really happy with the charnel blush i got from dior and this lipstick, I just, it's my favorite. I mean, all of them are great, but if I were to pick uh, my favorite, it would be the Rose Vier, just because, you know, reds look great on pictures and, in, and for Instagram, but in terms of every day, I just know that I'm probably going to wear more neutral subdued colors. Rose 074 and the Ispahan, the, you know, the standout shades for like, for the holiday, if you're going to a party or New Year's. I would say the Midnight Corolla and then that um, Capuchin, that really red-orange color is really, really, really beautiful. And I think those, I'm excited to try the Capuchin with the Warm Quad or Warm Quint because I think that'll look really beautiful. I am getting very warm because I'm wearing a sweater, but that's the thing when you're filming, it's like, you know, sometimes, at least for me, I get start to get warm and my face starts to get flush. So we'll end the video here. And... Um, that's my review. I think, you know, so far so good. I'm really impressed with, with this Dior collection, but I'll probably make more videos of what else I picked up from a Dior collection. Thanks for joining the Mickey Carr Beauty fam. And if you're interested, make sure to subscribe below and ring the bell so that you don't miss any of the videos. I try to upload two to three times a week. Um, subscribe, comment below, thumbs up, 
And as always, be kind to yourself, be kind to others, um, and moreover, just be you. Thanks for watching the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye.